Let's look at molecular oxygen. Molecular oxygen is paramagnetic, but it can undergo a transition where it becomes diamagnetic. The question I have for you is, which process involving a photon makes paramagnetic oxygen into diamagnetic oxygen? Is it an absorption, an emission, or an ionization? Think about that and make a selection. Let's look at a possible explanation for each answer. A, absorption of a photon can flip an electron spin, giving a diamagnetic spin pair. B, the paramagnetic state is higher energy, so emission is required to release this energy. Or C, removing an unpaired electron eliminates paramagnetism. Think about those three possible explanations and make another selection. We're talking about paramagnetic oxygen undergoing a transition to become diamagnetic. So here's paramagnetic ground state oxygen with its two unpaired electrons. To get to a diamagnetic state, I could have one electron flip spin. Now these would be effectively paired, and this would be a non-magnetic species, diamagnetic. An ionization event won't allow you to go to a diamagnetic species. If you remove an electron, from paramagnetic oxygen, you still have an unpaired electron, and it's still paramagnetic. The only question is, when I go from spins parallel to spins anti-parallel, I flip that spin, is this final state higher energy or lower energy? Well, I think you remember from filling electrons into orbitals, we put them in spin parallel because anti-parallel is the higher energy state. Making those magnets line up anti-parallel is a higher energy interaction. So this is the higher energy, diamagnetic, paired state, and it's an absorption event that goes from paramagnetic to diamagnetic. Now, it's an absorption in the red region of the visible spectrum, a low energy red photon. And oxygen, liquid oxygen, will absorb red photons, and it will appear blue. Remember, things that absorb in the red will transmit the blues. So liquid oxygen appears blue. We can see that in the demonstration lab. 